For those of you who aren't using hit points yet in Cubase, you have no more excuses. Because Cubase has made using hit points easier than ever with automatic hit point detection. What this means to you is that you spend a lot less time opening editors to detect hit points, adjust thresholds, and close windows. The moment a piece of audio is introduced to your project, whether through recording or importing, Cubase automatically calculates all of the hit points for you. Hit points are, in a nutshell, musically relevant positions in time on an audio file. This can mean the beginning transient of a word being said, or ideally, the beginning attack of the beats in the drum loop. Whether you're using hit points to correct timing, or you're using them to navigate your transport for speedy editing, hit points just got a heck of a lot easier to use. For instance, if on this vocal track I want to bounce to the next line, or the next beginning of a phrase after a period of silence, I can use the new minimum length control to set a minimum length for the hit point so that it doesn't catch every single word. Now by using the key commands Alt B and Alt N, I can move back to the previous hit point with Alt B as in back, and I can move forward to the next one with Alt N as in next. If I wanted to edit a specific drum part for timing reasons or a strange envelope effect without doing any work, I could take that part, divide the audio events by their hit points, and quickly quantize, or edit volume, or fade in and fade out settings for each individual hit. Now hit points have been around for quite a while in Cubase, but now anyone can use them. With little or no experience editing hit points in the edit window. It's important to remember that hit points do take a bit of time to calculate. So if you're going to work on a giant 100 channel film mix with a full orchestra, and you know you're not going to do any hit point detection, you can easily disable this feature under the preferences menu. Also, if you have a big project to mix that you're going to use hit points on, you can work on each track's hit points as soon as they've been automatically calculated for the track. And you'll have to allow a bit of time for that calculation to be completed. But hey, it's still way faster than calculating hit points on your own. Hit points don't have to be used just for timing corrections. They can be used for many different creative ideas, such as using the fade handles to create envelope effects. And automatic hit point detection makes using hit points that much easier. Automatic hit point detection, another incredible time saver, only in Cubase. Now we're going to cover a simple and yet incredibly useful new feature, re-record. Re-record essentially is a sped up way of tracking to save you time and keep you focused on recording your best possible take. Typically, when you record in Cubase, you set up your locators and pre-roll if need be, arm your tracks, and record a take. But what if you knew right in the first second of that take that you could do it better? Well, then you would have to stop the transport and either undo, delete, or erase the take, reset your locator, and hit record and start again. No big deal, right? But how about doing that for a whole bunch of takes? Add up the amount of time you spend repeating the same tasks, and you soon realize that a few seconds of interruption can take you right out of the headspace you were in when you started the take in the first place. Now you're angry and trying to stay in the zone while fiddling with your keyboard and mouse. Well, all of these frustrations disappear when you're using the new re-record feature in Cubase 7.5. What re-record essentially does is speed up the recording process by allowing you to cancel a recording in progress and restart the recording from the last start position that you used. To start using re-record, click on the top left of the transport bar here, change the record button mode. Under common record modes, choose re-record. Now start recording a take. So let's assume that I bomb my first take, and that's not too much of an assumption. All we have to do is hit the record button again, and the last events I recorded are automatically removed. Now don't panic if you think you may have prematurely gone on to the next take. Any audio that you recorded will still be available for reuse in the trash can in the pool. If you have a pre-count in your transport setup, this will be re-engaged when you start a re-recording. So will any pre-roll settings. 
ReRecord also works with MIDI tracks, so it's an all-around handy tracking tool to keep you in the right headspace and save you time by keeping you in the zone. One of the best features in Cubase is the score editor. This is no freebie built-in note display. This is a sophisticated, mature score editing environment used by many world-famous composers. To enter the score editor, select a MIDI or instrument track, and under the MIDI menu, choose Open Score Editor. Now we're not going to go into the basics of using the score editor, but with its intuitive menu structure, you should be able to pick keys, time signatures, and map out notes, rests, and chords in no time with very little practice. What's new, however, in the score editor is the ability to use all of the relevant MIDI functions found in the key editor. Not only do you have your standard notation symbols and MIDI functions in the score editor, but you also have all the tools you need to hammer out chord progressions fast using the chord editing tab. Not only can you make three or four note chord selections, you can also select and invert the chord. and even drop the second note in a chord, like in an open drop two arrangement. So if you're new to the score editor, having all of the MIDI functions from the key editor in the score editor might make you feel a little more at home as you explore this incredible new feature for the first time. Or if you're a seasoned score editor, you can now spend less time flipping back and forth between editors for full functionality.